God wants to do some extraordinary things in this house tonight. You need to know tonight that he's coming after you. <laughs> you know, when I showed up here on this premises tonight, I, I saw this in my heart. I actually walked, I text Pastor Austin to ask if the youth could come in here tonight. Because I felt like with all my heart, like I almost wanted to walk into every kid's class and say, get, him, get everybody in here. Because I honestly believe that the Lord just wants to move in this place tonight in such real and tangible ways. I believe that we as his people need to experience him in ways we've never experienced him before. We need to know that our God is great. He's bigger than my mind can comprehend. He can do super abundantly above anything that I can even begin to ask or think. This passage of scripture is found in, in Luke chapter eight, in verse 43. It says, a woman in the crowd has suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She could find no cure. You ever been there? Wore out, tired, exhausted, beat down, lost, broke, depressed, unhealthy, labeled, probably with labels you don't want to be labeled with, demised, put aside, marked off as less than, stay away, don't touch. Funny how you find these people in this book, because I got to believe that that's a lot of us at times in our lives where we encounter very real situations that really don't make sense and they're really hard. But you need to know that before your instance hits you, that Jesus already was on his way to come after you and to fix this situation that you're in. And what I saw in my heart tonight was that we would worship God together and I believe that there's people in this place tonight that are gonna experience God in ways you've never experienced him before. Why? Because you're gonna step out among your comfort zone and you're gonna encounter God for yourself. Not because somebody up here has amazing lights and screens and sound and a voice and all these things, but because you need to experience God for you. It's important that we as believers have authentic relationships with Jesus. That your relationship isn't with Jesus because your mom and dad drug you to church tonight or because your grandmother brought you to church tonight or because you just think that's a good thing to do. I better check that box off so that I'm good with God this week. You need to know you're good with God. He loves you. He's for you. And if society says you're, you're a no good, nothing, we don't want you around us, Jesus is like, I'm not coming after you. You're who I want. You're who I'm after. It says this woman was in the crowd and she had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She couldn't find a cure. Coming up behind Jesus, she touched the fringe of his robe and immediately the bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. Everyone denied it. You know what this says to me? It says to me that you can be amidst a crowd of people who are legitimately within inches of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who holds it all and not have any idea who you're standing next to. She could find no cure. I believe you're here tonight and I believe that you're going to find the cure that you're looking for because what you're looking for, his name is Jesus. He's your answer. He's your solution. If your body is broken, it's Jesus. If you're depressed, it's Jesus. If you're in fear, it's Jesus. If you're broken, it's Jesus. He's the cure. He's the answer. 
coming up behind Jesus. In other words, she had to move. It requires action. Standing in a pew, coming to church, parking myself in a seat does not do anything for me. I can go stand in a garage for the rest of my life. That's not going to make me a car. I got to move. I got to be willing to engage a, a step amidst a crowd. And you guys know that crowds can be nerve wracking. What is somebody going to think if I move? What is somebody going to think if I do this? If I raise my hands and I surrender? What if I'm in a crowd of people that don't want to surrender, but I do? Do it. We need it. Our young people need it. Our adults need it. Our children need it. The Bible says that in the last days, God is going to pour out of his spirit. We're in those days, people. He's pouring. He's pouring out his spirit. And it's up to you and I to engage that flow and to say, I'm going to take a step and I'm going to come into that touch because I need it. I got to have it. Listen, we can come up with a million solutions to our problems because we live in the greatest country in the world. If it's hurt, I can just go to the store and buy something and fix it for a, a, a short amount of time. I was talking to a guy today. His mom's on 15 meds. I would venture to say that if we were to start asking the question, how many of us have any level of brokenness in our life, every hand in this place would be raised high. Why? Because there's things in my life that I want to believe that I've given over to the Lord, but I haven't. I believe that I can handle it. I believe that I can fix it. And unfortunately, year is going to go by, and another year is going to go by, and another year is going to go by, and another year is going to go by, until I face the reality that I can't fix me. I got to have him. I got to have his word. I got to have what he has to say. I got to have the presence of God that he carries. I got to have it. And I'll tell you, it's very easy to attend church and leave church and attend church and leave church and attend church and leave church and still have brokenness in my life. But that's not God's choice for me. He made a way. Jesus feels this power leave his body amidst a crowd, which I would venture to say, you guys are a crowd over here. You're probably rubbing up against the person next to you, right? You're feeling people touch you, whatever. There's something about this touch. This touch was coming from a heart that had determined nothing else can fix this. It's only him. He's the one. And for you and I to sit here and come to church and check the box and do the thing and to, in a sense, be in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and to be in this picture of people that are like, what are you talking about, Jesus? What do you mean who touched me? Everybody's, we're in a crowd, Jesus. Everyone denied it. Peter said, Master, this whole crowd is pressing against you. You know, if we understood that, then this is scriptural. You see this all throughout scripture that when Jesus would enter places, it was like, I'm leaving what I'm doing. I got to go over here to this guy because something's about to happen. Somebody's life is about to be changed. So I'm I'm about to witness a miracle. I'm about to see something That's him. That's the guy that everybody's talking about, that everywhere he goes, people get healed. Everywhere he goes, people get set free. Everywhere he goes, he offers therapy. Everywhere he goes, he has the words that carry the life that I've been so longing for and desiring and hungering for. It's him. So they set aside their stuff and they come after him. And you can do this. But Jesus said, someone deliberately 
touched me, for I felt healing power go out from me. When the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fell to her knees in front of him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had been immediately healed. Jesus looks at her and he says, daughter, he said to her, your faith has made you well. Jenna, your faith will make you well. Not my faith. It wasn't Jesus' faith. We know that Jesus has faith. Your faith has made you well. I don't know about you, but I want to be well. Do you want to be well? You young people want to be well? Do you want to look forward to your future? Instead of being concerned for your future and worried about your future and wondering about your future, you want to be made well? I'm asking you, do you want to be made well? This is how it works. You come to Him, you move. Listen, in this church, we have amazing teaching. Amazing teaching. But what good is a Super Bowl team if all they have is a coach that teaches them plays and they never actually grab the football and go out on the field and play the play? We have amazing teaching here. The Word of God is te- taught in this, in this place. But it can't be so comfortable to me to just sit in my seat and go, that was a good service. Why was it good? What makes it good? Did you get a goose bump? Is that what made it good? Is that the level of our God? He gives goose bumps? Man, 1 John, the Lord laid his hands on me and I got goose bumps up and down. You don't read that in here. You read that they touched him and they got healed of plagues. Two chapters later, he's talking to a guy that's been next to a pool that in this, in this very book right here, there's a pool where bodies are laid all over the place. I need you to picture this. People that are in ailment, they're broken, they're rejected, they're out of place, they're handicaps. And every now and then this water begins to move. And according to, for some reason, this water, whenever this happens, legitimately angels are stirring the water and whoever gets in the water first gets their miracle. And two, ch- two chapters later from where I'm reading right now, there's a guy that's been sitting there for 38 years watching the water get stirred and watching everybody else and their brother get healed. And I can about imagine that if that's me sitting there, I'm pretty stinking frustrated at this point because I just want to be healed and I can't. How do I get healed? Guess what? Knock, knock, knock. Here comes Jesus. If you can't get to the pool, I'm coming to you. And this is what he does. This is who he is. He's coming after you, young people. He wants you. He desires you. He needs you. You're a part of his grand plan in this planet. And right now in droves, people are blowing their brains out because they're so depressed. They're so lost. They're so upside down. They're so broke. And they come to church and they're not getting what they're looking for. But we've got what they need. It's him. And he so longs for you and I to just step out and say, I'm going to touch the fringe of his robe tonight and I'm going to get what I came for. I'm leaving this place healed. I'm leaving this place well. I'm leaving this place put together. I'm leaving this place whole. No more depression. No more fear. 
No more anxiety. No more sleepless nights. No more nightmares. No more brokenness. We got to do it, guys. And I'm not, please understand, I'm not yelling at you guys. I believe in this because I've watched it work over and over and over and over and over again in my own life. There are times when I feel like quitting. I'm done. I'm walking away. I don't want anything to do with this. But I can't because who lives on the inside of me is greater than anything else that I could come up against. I believe this. Do you? It's one thing to stand out there and see somebody that quote unquote believes it. Your faith will make you well. Your faith. Your faith. Your faith. Look at your neighbor say, your faith. (laughs) Say it like this. Your faith. So I've asked this worship team tonight. I just want you guys to, to, to... Here's here's what I saw in my heart, okay? We're going to do what I saw in my heart. Because I pray this every day of my life, pretty sure. Very rarely do I forget to pray this prayer. But I pray, and we do this as a family, I pray that my eyes would see, that my ears would hear, and that my heart would understand. And I'll tell you guys, right now in this world and what's going on, the the Spirit of God is showing people things. I have a choice, if I see it, (laughs) to respond to what I see. Or I can just pass by and I can, in a sense, stamp it and say, good enough. We need God's presence. You need God's presence. So what I saw in my heart was beyond church, just worshiping God tonight. Beyond church being you and you and you back there and you in the way back and all you young people. And the way that I saw this was that you and I, this is not an easy thing to do, guys. As, 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 As people, this is just, we have become so prone and so conditioned to just have it all together and to always be good. And we don't want to be authentic. We don't want to be real. We don't want to tell somebody, I'm really having a struggle. But tonight, I'm not asking you to come and tell me all your problems. But I'm, I, I've, I've, I've watched in the, in, the, in the days past, just there are some very real attacks that are taking place. And I believe that much like this lady that we're reading about that was in a crowd of people that were all around Jesus and yet didn't even realize that he was there, that you and I can play a role and say, you know what? If I was to honestly inventory my life, I would say that Jesus has a very small percentage of all of me. But Jesus in scripture tells us, come to me all. Come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I believe with all my heart that God wants to give you rest tonight. But that's not going to come because we preach an amazing message or we sing an amazing song. That's gonna come because you're willing to step out from among the crowd and say, you know what, God, I want you. I need you. I can't fix this, but you can. Um, 
so I saw in my heart, like just, maybe you're in here tonight and you've suffered or, or you're, you're, you're having issues with pornography. Or maybe you're in here tonight and you're just highly depressed. Or maybe you're in here tonight and you go to sleep at night and you fear for tomorrow. Maybe you're in here tonight and your uh, legs aren't working correctly. There's a lot of pain in your joints. Maybe you're in here tonight and you just are sleepless. You can't sleep. Too much stuff going on all the time. Maybe you're in here tonight and you're on the verge of losing your family. Or maybe you're in here tonight, you've been standing in, in, in the gap for somebody and you just feel like it's never going to come to pass. Just based on what I just said there, is there anybody that's dealing with anything tonight that you need help with? Raise your hands. And I'm not asking you to just raise your hands to raise your hands. I'm saying that when you and I approach God in a humble state and we understand that I can't fix this, but you can. And if I'll make you my source, then I can confidently say that you'll, you'll change this situation in my life. That's what he wants to do. Amen. So what I saw in my heart was that you and I would just take some time to worship God as individuals, but as a church, yes, because we're all here. But if you're in here tonight and you got things going on in your life, I want you to come up here to this altar. And I want you to break outside the mold of what's comfortable in that chair. And I want you to be willing to come up here and say, God, I need you, I'm hungry for you, I desire you, I'm asking you to fill me up, to change this situation, to fix what's wrong, to heal my heart, to put together what's been busted out. I'm asking you to heal bodies in this place. I'm asking you for miracles. I'm asking you for signs. I'm asking you to demonstrate your power and your goodness and your faithfulness on the, on the, on the lives of these people. We're hungry for you. We desire you. I'm asking you to pour out in this place. Fill up these people. Fill up their spirit. Fill up their heart. Let them experience you. Let them see who you are. Let them get eyes that see, ears that hear, hearts that understand. Let them leave this place tonight. Put back together. Let me leave this place tonight whole and complete. Nothing missing. Nothing lacking. Nothing broken. Just knowing that you have me. Knowing that you're with me. Knowing that you're for me. Knowing that I'm all yours. Knowing that we're in this together. Knowing that I'm not alone. We ask you, Father, come and be in this place tonight. Use us, Lord. Change us. Speak to us. Forgive us. Heal us. Deliver us. We come to you because you alone have the words that carry the life. And we need it. We need life. We need life. And I'm crying out, God, for life. Fill this place with your life. We need it. tonight and you think, I don't, I've never done anything like this before. Well, let me just show you how simple this is. 
It's as simple as just me coming to him. I don't care about what people think about me. I don't care what my neighbor thinks about me. I don't care what he thinks I sound like. I don't don't care because it's not for him. It's not for her. It's my heart mixing my faith with my father who loves me. So there's something about me just closing my eyes and lifting my hands in a sense, surrender. You know, I have a 20 month old baby a boy at home. His name is Cruz. And when I come home from work almost every day, the first thing he does is run up to me and puts his hands up. Why? Because he wants me to pick him up. And I feel like uh, our culture has taught us well to blend, to act like we've got it together, to act like we're strong, to act like we're, we're this, that, or we're, we're all the things. But we may not be. And that's what's so cool about God and the gospel is that even in my unperfectness, he's coming after me. And he's going to meet me. He's going to meet me. He may, he may, uh, you may have woke up this morning and you're going through life and it's been the same old, same old depression, anxiety, all the things that you're dealing with. Maybe you're on the low end of the totem pole and you just feel like you're a worthless human being and, and why are you even here? Why do you even, why do you even, why? Why even be here? Just quit. Just be done. Like, why? You don't need this. Nobody needs you. Nobody cares about you. Those are all lies. And that's how your enemy talks to you. And just like we see in uh, the book of John chapter four, this lady at the well, the the Samaritan at the well, you need to understand this story is that this lady was at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to people. They basically, society had viewed her as rejected. This lady was on, she was beyond marriage number five. Now, I don't think that it'd be a good thing for any of us to say, my goal in life is to have as many marriages as I can. But this lady evidently had one and it failed, two and it failed, three and it failed, four and it failed, five and it failed. And she's going on number six. And she's probably in the same situation that she's been in before, feeling completely rejected, hopeless, lost, broken, empty. I just going to be apart from society. Nobody cares about me anyway. So I'll just live my life over here outside of what everybody else is doing. And I got to go to the well because I'm not allowed to be around people because I'm the town loser and I'm a failure and I can't get anything right and I can't ever do it right. So by golly, I got to go to the well when it's a hundred degrees outside and nobody else is there and I'll have to fetch some water for myself because nobody even cares about me. And while she's having these thoughts at her house, probably that morning, There's already this man by the name of Jesus who is en route walking 20 miles to get to this well that was way out of his way. Why? Because somebody just like you is sitting at the well. And it grieves his heart to know that there's somebody out there right now that's broken, hurting, lost, empty, probably dragging her feet to the well, thinking I'm just going to get a drink of water again. Little did she know that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lo- the one who holds the universe in his hands, the one who would look at her and approve of her, was going to meet her there that day. 
Who knows how long her marriages were? Maybe they were a week. Maybe they were six years. Maybe they were, you know, you see people in life that have been married for 30 years and all of a sudden they're getting divorced. I've seen that happen in my lifetime. Well, we just grew apart. Just different people these days. What happened? All this to say, she comes to that well. And she starts to have a conversation with, again, somebody that she doesn't really even know. She doesn't know that I am is standing right in front of her. Because I am is wearing sandals. I am is dressed just like a guy of that day would be dressed. I am sweating because he just walked 20 miles in the heat. I am is probably leaning on the well. All right, God, Father, I know you sent me here today. I know you didn't just send me here to get a drink. (laughs) So I, I came where you sent me to go. Now what? Oh, here comes this person. Wouldn't you know? Man, the goodness of God, all about people, coming after them. God's coming after some people today. God's coming after our our society. He's coming after our, our, our people. He's coming after your family. He's coming after you. And I think you need to hear that tonight. That God's not always just chasing and doing everything for everybody else and leaving you out of the mix. You're very important to him. You're very needed by him. He created every single person in here for such a time as this. So he's, he's at the well with this lady. going to kind of read through this. I know that it's already 8, 8, 11, so we're not going to sit here and go all night, but I believe that, I believe that you're in the presence of God right now. And I believe that he's moving in hearts and I believe that he's moving in bodies. And I believe that he's fixing things that you can't even see right now because he's just that good. And when you come to him, even if all you get is a piece of yarn off of his robe, you'll get everything that you needed to get. Cause he's just that good. Amen. He meets up with this lady and he says, can you give me a drink? He was alone at the time because the disciples had gone to the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. This is majorly cultural right now. There's tons of people in our society right now that feel so rejected, like they're worthless. (laughs) And like we can easily live in these platforms of life where I'm better than you because I don't, or I have, or I can, or you, you, you won't, or whatever. We live on these levels where we think we're better. You need to understand we're all loved the same by the King. He loves you authentically the way that he designed you to receive love. That's what's so cool about God. It says Jesus replied, um, or it says, she said to Jesus, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. Why are you asking me for a drink? You know, in, in culture of that day, like Samaritans were like, that the bottom of your shoe like they were low on the on the scale for society of that day Jews pretty much if you read through scripture hated Samaritans Jesus doesn't hate Samaritans <laughs> Jesus always bucks culture culture he just does things differently than culture does things culture says it's okay to hate somebody they've really screwed you over you can hate them not if you're going to follow Jesus <laughs> Jesus replied if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to you would ask me and I would give you living water but sir you don't have a rope or a bucket she said this well is very deep where would you get this living water 
Besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestors, Jacob, who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals have enjoyed? Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I will give. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. I believe that that's the spigot that you and I are to be drinking from. The one that gives unending eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, give me that water and I'll never be thirsty again. I wanted to come here and get water. <laughs> She's still not seeing it. You and I probably wouldn't be seeing it either. Go and get your husband, Jesus told her. I, I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband. You have five. You've had five. You're not even married to the man you're living with right now. You certainly spoke the truth. Sir, this woman said, you must be a prophet. So what's Jesus doing here? He's probing the reality of this lady's life at the moment where she's broke. And she's probably around people carrying herself like, I'm all right. I got this. This relationship's gonna work, mom and dad. I promise. I know, I know the last five haven't worked, but this one's the one. I believe it. I believe that I found the one, right? Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist, insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship while we Samaritans claim it to be here on Mount Gerizim where our ancestors worship? So Jesus is asking her about the husbands and stuff. In a sense, he's asking about the personal life. And what, is, what do we as people do so many times is we wanna be spiritual with Jesus. We wanna ask Jesus spiritual questions when he's asking us things that aren't really spiritual in a sense. Um, so don't change the topic. Whatever he's dealing with you tonight on, let him deal with it. Don't try to change the subject. Don't try to appear better than you are. Just be authentically you. And if you're dealing with real things, good thing you got a real savior that really loves you. And he really paid a really big price for you. Jesus replied, believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether we worship the Father on this mountain or in Jer on Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him, for salvation comes to the Jews. The time is coming, indeed it's here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. The Father is looking for truth. Not your truth, He's looking for those that'll worship him in the spirit and in truth. In other words, yeah, this is me, God. But I believe that you wanna do something in me and in my heart and you wanna change the situation that I'm in right now. You wanna fix what's broken. You wanna, you wanna, take a, you wanna bring light to where there's darkness and confusion. God wants you living free, amen? For God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in the spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And Jesus told her, I'm the Messiah. Just then his disciples came back. If you jump down here, verse, um, verse 31, it says, Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. But Jesus replied, I have a kind of food that you know nothing about. Someone bring him food while we were gone. And then Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. You know the saying four months between, uh, between planting and harvest, but I say, wake up and look around. If I could tell you something tonight, I'd say this, wake up and look around. Harvest is everywhere you look. I'm just waiting for somebody to just come out and reach out a hand and say, how can I help you? And offer these people the words of life from this book. The words of Jesus, how much he loves them, how much he's pleased with them. The Bible actually says that the harvesters are paid good wages and the fruit that they harvest is people brought to eternal life. 
says, what joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike. You know the saying, one plants, another harvests, and it's true. I sent you to harvest where you didn't plant. Others had already gone and done the work, and now you will get to gather the harvest. I missed one part there. Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything I ever did. When they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in their village. So he stayed for two days, long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. Then they said to the woman, now we believe not just because of what you told us, but because we've heard him ourselves. Now we know that he indeed is the savior of the world. I want to just close this tonight. With verse 29, it says this lady went to her village and this was her message. Come and see the man who told me everything I ever did. Come and see. World's got to see it. They got to see it. They're going to see it in you. They're not going to see it in me if my life looks just like theirs. They're going to see it if I'm believing it and I'm attesting to it and I'm committing my way to it and watching God do what only God can do in my life. It causes the world to see it. And when they, they don't need to see me, they need to see him. You need to see him. There's no counselor on this green earth that could give you what he can give you. He's the greatest counselor there ever was. So if you're in here tonight, you got questions, you're hurting, you're broken, all the things that you may, in a sense, be identifying as, you need to know that the gospel changes everything. You need to know that there's something to be said about me as an individual engaging my faith, hearing what God has to say to me and grabbing a hold of his words to me and occupying that place, amen? So this is Wednesday night crowd. Obviously the vast majority of us probably are saved but I would like to just pray for you tonight before we go. And um, as I pray tonight, what I want you to do is, is take your faith and engage it with mine. What does that look like? Like, just co- let's come into agreement with what God's word says. Amen. Can we do that? Everybody, every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we come to you tonight in the name of Jesus. I believe that you're a healer. I believe that people in this place got healed tonight. You know, if you're in here tonight and you've been having ailment in your body, having struggles, moving joints, having uh, headaches, migraines, having uh, just brokenness of any sort, you can reach out right now and just take it because he's here. He withholds no good thing from us. So if that's you, just reach out and take it. I receive that, Father, by faith. I'll take that. You said that I'm healed. You sent in your word. You healed me. You delivered me from death. That's what scripture says. And so if that's what he did, then by golly, I receive that by faith. I'll take that. Thank you, Lord. If you're in this place tonight, you're dealing with depression. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. There's joy found in him. And just knowing he's with you, he's for you, he's living in you. He wants to be using your hands and your feet to deliver other people out of depression, to see their lives be changed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just lift up these people. And I just ask you, Father, for God encounters in their lives as they're going throughout this week. I thank you that you're with them. Everywhere that they go, everywhere that they put their feet, Lord, that you're with them. You're for them. You're speaking to them. I want you to say this with me. I have eyes that see. I have ears that hear. I have a heart that understands. I'm listening to truth. When he speaks, I listen. If he asks me to go, I'll go. If he asks me to do, I'll do. Whatever he says, that's what I'm doing. I'm committing my way 
to you. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And we honor you tonight. And we just give you this service, Lord. I thank you for what you've done in here tonight. I just believe that these lives have experienced your presence tonight. Lord, that we would never be the same. Oh, God, just put within us such a hunger for the things of you, Father. We desire you. And I thank you for being so good to us, Lord. We love you so much. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Everybody said, amen. Hey, if you got a miracle or something tonight, God did something in your life, come up, let's talk about it. I'd love to hear it. Amen? Tell a friend. Tell somebody. God, God did this for me tonight. He healed my body tonight. He, he delivered me from depression, depressive thoughts tonight. He delivered me from a mindset that's been just wanting to end it all. God does that stuff. Amen? He's still in the business. He hasn't, he hasn't clocked out. Amen? You guys are loved, and you're needed, and you're a vital part to what God wants to do in this planet in these days ahead. Amen? Amen. Love you guys.